Hello folks and welcome to another episode of The Goodger Presents More Than A Club A West Ham Manager Football West Ham <laughs> Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of The Goodger Presents More Than A Club a West Ham football manager save. Last time out, we started the season. We had a tough, tough start of the season. Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, all within the opening few games. We started the season, we've built our team, we've got our transfers in. Um, and to be honest, it went as well as expected. Uh, we lost to Man City and we beat Sheffield United. Pretty much same as anybody does everywhere else. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the game and we're going to play through... The first four months of the season, so we're finishing off October. Um, finishing off October. <sighs> Hello, folks. Welcome along to another episode of More Than a Club, a West Ham football manager save. My name's Dave. And we have started the season with West Ham. We have gone through pre-season. We've built our tactic. We've, we've, we've got our recruitment in. And the first two games of the season went pretty much as expected. We played Man City and we lost. And we played Sheffield United and we won. Now we have got the last game of, the, of, of August where we are playing Arsenal. And then we're heading straight along and we're going through September where we start our Europa League campaign. We start our Carabao Cup campaign and hopefully get some points on the board in the Premier League. So let's jump on over as we see how well we can do with West Ham. So here we are, like I said, we have started the season. The expectations of the board is mid-table, um, which is good because that's pretty much where I expect us to be. Uh, like I said, last time out, we played um, Man City and, and we got thoroughly trounced 5-1. Uh, Erling uh, Haaland scoring four. Erling Haaland doing what Erling Haaland does. Uh, we had the temerity to score, which kind of upset them. And then they scored three in quick succession after that. Um, after that was Sheffield United, which was the last game of the previous video. Please, by all means... Go back and watch the previous two videos and, and, and get yourself acquainted to what we the tactic we're playing. Um, and, and that was a lot, lot better. Uh, that was a 3-0 win. Their goal coming in the 93rd minute. After that, like I said, we were... Uh, Arsenal closed out the, uh, the, the opening month of August and again went kind of as expected. Uh, because Bukayo Saka pretty much running the show, talk, scoring two goals in the opening 15 minutes. Uh, we, we were not at the races. We, they had 15 shots to our five. We only had one on target. Emerson got himself sent off on 69 minutes, which absolutely did not make it any better for us. Uh, only two bright sparks in the entire game for us. Ariola, uh, despite conceding two, played a seven. And Thomas Suchek in midfield again did quite well himself so that left us um, from our opening three games of, of just the three points from the Sheffield United game which took us over to the, the the third tough game in the opening four fixtures that was Liverpool Liverpool came and knocking at London Stadium and we managed to pull ourselves a little draw out of this we we pushed ourselves back to a, a 4-2-3-1 formation, uh, whereas previously at the start of the season we were we were toying around with the, with sort of an eye of Sauron, a a circular formation, three at the back, two wing backs, two wide men, and a striker. Uh, sorry, two strikers with one central midfielder only. Uh, it, it's fine in practice. We were getting overrunning midfield. So I've dropped it back to a standard 4-2-3-1. Um, I say standard. We've not got um, 
two holding midfielders, we've got two central midfielders, a ball winner midfielder and a deep line playmaker. Um, and, and, and it worked by and large. Sure, we conceded two goals. Wataru Endo in the sixth minute uh, scores for Liverpool to give them an early lead. And the first half pretty much played by the books. They, they were in charge. Um, Mo Salah at the byline, pulled it back. And then Endo from the edge of the area absolutely hammered his shot in. But we, we rallied well. We created, we created more chances than Liverpool in the end. Uh, they had more possession, but only barely. RXG was double theirs. And Marcus Leonardo, uh, who, who came on as a substitute in that second half, uh, finally gets uh, a deserved equaliser for us after Lucas Pacatar missed a penalty at the start of the second half. But Leonardo, who, who came in, scored uh, the, the, the equaliser. Could have swing that over. And then with Becker, Alison Becker coming out, reaching for the ball and missing it, it was a simple nod in for Marcus Leonardo. So that was a bonus point. We didn't expect anything out of that game. A point at, uh, against Liverpool is always a good point. So that was that was really good, which set us up and and, and then with the, with the tough start out of the way, Wolves were up next, and once again. We had a slow start. Mateus Kuna for Wolves were really made us pay. Uh, we were slow out the gates. Uh, Kuna coming on the left hand side, wins it back off Suchek, and then a disappointing one for Ariola to uh, concede. I'm not 100% convinced with him. He's, he's been very hit and miss so far this season. Uh, but on the half hour, James Ward-Prowse, again, restored pa parity for us. Ollie Watkins, a pack of tar, and a pit, bit of pinball. Drops to Ward-Prowse to score his first goal for the club. We pushed on from there, and, and we really did dominate the game. 59% possession, 20 shots, 12 on target. We just couldn't find our way past Jose Sarr, who played a 7.2 in the Wolves goal. A lot of bookings rattling up. We're not pl particularly playing um, a, a, a high, uh, heavy tackling or, or, or get stuck in because that <laughs> that way leads a lot of penalties. Been there before. Um, after that, we had our opening game in the Europa League. We were away to Antwerp. Um, so we really were a bit of an unknown quantity here. With, with this one, but we managed to come out uh, quite comfortable winners in the end, although Antwerp in the second half did come back at us. Um, so we're going to watch the, the, the key highlights of this. Like I said, they, they were as good as they got and early doors hitting the woodwork and, and, and waking us up really in the 18th minute it was a very much an ebb and flow type game Pakatar pulls it back Kudus in the area pulls it back to Sufau and Sufau rifles in the opening goal Worked well from the left wing across the line to Sufal, who was attacking on the right. Then, seven minutes before half time, Emerson doing well down the left, feeding Pakatar. Pakatar plays it into Watkins, who nods it down to Ward Prowse. Finds it right back to Pakatar, whose shot is just inches wide, just pulled his shot a little bit. On the hour mark, Antwerp starting with a corner. Pulls it back, working it away again from right to left. We win the ball back though. Oli Watkins breaking forwards, feeds it on to Kudus. Dispossessed though, out of our road. And this is where the, the, the ebb and flow, the back and forth comes from. Bowen tracking back well, working hard. That's one thing he has been really pleased with. Is he was a little bit slow on the uptake of the goals. His passing though, really disappointing there. Set us on the back foot as a lot of us were, were pushing for the 
counter attack and fortunate very fortunate and not to concede early doors there as a couple of minutes later to check driving forward finds Bowen he plays it back to two foul the two right wingers combining well there into Kudus on the area dinks it over and then Lucas Pakatar at the far post rifling the volley in which, which really was that was a settled down we, we were able to sit back and sort of relax a little bit until obviously we would take our foot off the book a little bit too much I'd gone then from a from a a polish to a balance and try to slow everything down to win the game as it was they fired one back early doors but it was only really in the, the the dying stages that we were able to put the game to bed fully um, James Ward Prowse with the corner swung in comes back out to him again and then Thomas Suchek from the edge maybe had a penalty the referee let it play. Zuma knocks it back to Suchek and he rifles in the third to make it 3-1. And that's where it lied. Like I said, Antwerp came at us in the second half. They made it, they had more chances. Less on target, sure. But they had more chances. High XG. Um, we were good value for the win. Uh, we made the changes to the mentality and to the, to the passing style once we hit... Uh, the two goal lead that cost us maybe a little bit of uh, management error there Mo Kudus with the uh, with the man of the match two assists from him playing an 8.5 so that was uh, all in all a really good start to the Europa League campaign which led us on to uh, Luton Luton at home in the Premier League and one where we the, quality showed out here we really did uh, put them to the sword they only had four shots the entire game didn't trouble Ariola at all not one shot on target uh, 17 shots from ourselves nine of them on target two goals one by Ollie Watkins in the first half which worked well Zuma feeds Sufau to Bowen Bowen playing an early cross and despite surrounded by two Luton players, Ollie Watkins rises high as to hammer to his header home. And then just before the hour mark in the second half, a Luton throw in is won back by Kudus, moves it on to Ward Prowse, who feeds it into Bowen, and that gets him off the mark for the season domestically. A 2 0 win, like I said. Bowen, man of the match, assist for the first goal, scores the second one. Ward Prowse, he has been playing as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Um, halfway through that game, we, we changed it up and changed him into a deep-line playmaker. He went from having a 6.6 .6 to ending up with a 7.6. A lot better game from him. Uh, so he will be uh, given less of a work rate job to do, less of a workman job to do, and more sit back spray those passes like he can do like we all know he can do after that it was literally it was just three days later so the Carabao Cup came around and it was a a massively changed squad the only three players that kept their place from the win against Luton was Ariola, Pakatar, Bowen and Watkins Everybody else was rotated round. Then on the day of the match, best laid plans, Pablo Fornals, who was going to be playing in that uh, deep line playmaker role, got injured. So Mo Kudus came in uh, and really did repay for um, the, the faith played in moving him away from that shadow striker role he'd been playing, dropped into a deep line playmaker. And this was a goal fest from start to finish. In the 27th minute, Bowen pulls it back. Kudus, although VAR looked at it, 
after that Douglas Luiz just a few minutes later from a, uh, a Aston Villa breakaway uh, it was touch and go whether it was in the area in the end the referee gave it from the spot Douglas Luiz finishes that one into the second half Walker Pieces plays Alvarez who ducks it over and then there's Ollie Watkins to to score against his old team again another towering header from him on the hour mark this is now uh, this is now 2-1 uh, on the hour mark Kudus with a free kick plays it out to Watkins and arrow like finish across the keeper we're not finished though John McGinn plays it in that makes it 3-2 five minutes from time Villa are now down to 10 men and Jared Bowen cutting inside onto his left foot, bending the ball beautifully round. And then in the 97th minute, Sayed Ben Rama squares across and Mo Kudus puts the game to bed, makes it 5-2, moves us on into the fourth round where we will be playing Brighton away from home. Could have been worse, could have been easier, could have been worse. Um... So that brings us up to date with games. Currently, we are sitting in 12th place in the league. Played six, drawn two, won two, lost two. Uh, negative two uh, goal difference. That'll be that game against Man City, 5-1. Um, we are clawing back the, uh, the negative goal difference on there. Taking us a little time, but we are getting there. Up next and the last part of action in this video is the live play of the Bournemouth away from home fixture. So we'll come back when it's game day. It's game day. Forest have beaten Luton already in the early fixture. And big games coming up. Arsenal, Newcastle. We've got Man U versus Brentford. That's never easy. Uh, Spurs, Man City, a big game there for Spurs. And, and obviously ourselves away at Bournemouth. Uh, we are not going cautious we are, we're away from home, so I'm going to stick with the uh, balanced to start with. Like I said, we are gone into a 4-2-3-1 formation. Two inside forwards. Fullbacks on there. Uh, that, that is supposed to be a winger there. Uh, I'll tap. Uh, Ward Prowse is a the deep line playmaker. Two checkers of ball in the midfielder, two def so central defenders on, def on, on defend. Marcus Leonardo is in for Ollie Watkins. It was literally two days ago that we played the Villa game. He's being rested. He's on the bench in case we need him. But young Marcus Leonardo, uh, who, who did really well in pre season, he's coming in 20 years old. He's going to get his um, first start for West Ham. And we are away at Bournemouth. Um, Jared Bowen's upset because Kirkes is physically stronger. Well, don't get into a fight with him then. That would be fine. Just, just don't. Recent form, Bournemouth have won just one of their last five. We are five unbeaten, three wins in a row in all competitions. And the media's been our back for ages. Go out there and stick it to them by proving them wrong. Everyone's motivated apart from Zuma. I can live with that. He's composed. Let's uh, see if we can't get a little bit of a... I'm expecting you to show up and perform. We need it. Okay. Still composed. I've not let him down. 
and it's a 4-3-3 with a DM for Bournemouth, Dominic Solanke up top, Sinistera from uh, Leeds over on the right, Tyler Adams from Leeds as the DM, okay, let's go, Bournemouth uh, in the black and white, West Ham playing in the white, Twenty minutes in, not a lot happening. Let's get some encouragement onto the onto the players. We are, we've got all the momentum to it. I'm just going to knock this up to positive. Just see if we can't get a little bit more urgency. Okay. Start highlight with Bournemouth. Kirk is on their right. Kudus wins it. But can't keep hold of it. Trey always through, takes a shot. Oh no! That is not what we wanted. Kudus high up the pitch, trying to find Bowen, lost possession, and Bournemouth hit us on the counter. Trey always pace, gets in behind the, the defensive line. Again, though, Ariola, you gotta love it doing better there at your near post. Mm. Okay, so the first highlight Lee yields the first goal and we reach half time not doing well at all here. It's a chance of it's a game of few chances. Um let's get into the dressing room. I'm not gonna change anything too drastically yet. Um point the finger, not creative enough, not positive enough. if we can get anything out of this early doors in this second game second half could who's playing 6-3 that's not good okay, so half hours play this is not working here at all so Pakatar for Kudus who's both tired and not playing well and Ollie Watkins can come on for Leonardo I think that's all we can do front line wise. I'm gonna go attacking. Um, we are gonna push this defensive line up a touch. Um, uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more there. We'll play for some set pieces because while we've got Ward Prout on there, we need to take advantage of any set pieces we get. Right then, Bournemouth absolutely bossing this. Okay, let's get a shout of demand more out there. Okay, Pakatar with the deep free kick lifted high. Suchek keeps it down in the area, pulls it back to Pakatar, and it gets through the crowd. There's the equaliser with 20 minutes to play. That's a lot better. Pakatar lifts it up. Suchek peels off from the pack, keeps hold of it, pulls it back to Pakatar, and his low shot through the crowd misses everybody and nestles bottom corner. Straight from kickoff, Bournemouth have the highlight though. Never, never a good thing. Traore's pace has got him on the ball again. Pulled over, Sinistera pulls it back. Playing it across in front of the West Ham defensive line. It's, just, it's a disciplined line though. We're not being pulled out of position too much. So the steer has got it though. Goes for goal. It's the post. Oof. Right. Ben Rama's not having the best of games. So we've not really got anyone we can do there. Um... Ward Prowse can play that attacking midfielder role. Yeah, 
let's do that. Let's let's move Pakitar out onto the left. Alvarez on for Ben Lama. Bring Will Prowse as an advanced playmaker here on support. And we'll go double ball winning midfielder in here. See if we can't in the last 15 minutes uh, eke ourselves a pretty undeserved win if we're being honest if we do manage to get it. Saar gets the ball deep, plays it to Zuma. Zuma with plenty of time to find the right pass. Alvarez's pass is poor. Sinistera to Saar, dominates to Lanky. Another poor pass from Azuma's pass into Alvarez. Alvarez trying to move it on quickly straight to Bournemouth and then they are quick as a flash straight onto us. <sighs> Two goals from Bournemouth. Both come from misplaced passes from ourselves. Ward Prowse free kicks. Ollie Watkins. Ollie Watkins off the woodwork. Zuma's onto it first. And it's a corner. Bowen with the corner. Swing in. And after Zuma, Ward Prowse pinballs around. It's another corner, the other side. Ward Prowse to take this one. Near post. Backs out to Ward Prowse, to Zuma. Back to Sufau, and that's where it ends. Five minutes to go. Bowen beaten to it, but Zuma's recycles it to Alvarez. Saar, down the line to Ward Prowse. Max Lowe picks it up. 87th minute. Suchek. Very disciplined from Bournemouth. Pakitars gets it inside to Lowe, into the area, squares it out. Ward Prowse! Oh, it's a great save from Neto. Leads to a corner. 87th minute. It's gone short. Bowen, Pakatar, Ward Prowse. That's poor. 90th minute. Into time added on. We've got four minutes. And I think that's it. It's going to be a disappointing loss. And it's there. We've got pretty much what we deserved. Authors of our own demise. A poor pass in the first half. Freed out Triori to outpace the defence. And then Alvarez gift wrapping the ball to them. Um, and yeah, away from home, really disappointing. With thrashing the arms, I'm far from pleased there. Um, and yeah, sure, a couple of bright sparks. Suchek and, and Max Lowe. But mm, really not impressed with that at all. Leaves it down in 12th. That was one of the games we really, really wanted to get won. So we are, that's where we're going to leave this, this video. And coming up on the next one, uh, we'll have uh, two Europa League games. We've got Mikhaiba Haifi and Dinamo Kiev and then league games against Fulham and Everton and then a big big London derby against Spurs so that is where that is there thank you everyone um, that's been watching please hit that like button hit the subscribe button uh, leave me any comments if you, if you any ideas for for tactics instructions or anything like this honestly back seating is very very welcome here um, yeah Thank you everyone for watching. I'll catch you on the next episode of More Than A Club. Ta-ta for now.